What is up guys? So first of all, thank you so much to everybody who watched the first vlog. Um, vlog? You see, I'm not even that used to it. I, can't, I keep getting the words wrong. But I know I got loads of messages of my friends and family. So thank you, thank you so much. I'm going to keep these up. I'm going to try and get one a week done. It's a lot. It's a lot more than I thought it would be, but it's also a lot of fun. I'm going to keep this vlog really short. The last one was quite long. And I learned from that mistake. And I thought it would be cool to tell you guys how I actually got started in magic. This is a story <laughs> all about how my life got twisted upside down and I'd like to take a minute. <laughs> Stop messing. The first strange thing about this story is that I actually started when I was 18, which is quite late for a magician to start learning magic. So most of the famous guys, like let's say your dynamos, your David Blaine's, your Copperfields, Darren Brown, all those guys, they all started out when they were a good bit younger. They would have had a magic kit in the house, maybe they saw something on TV that they loved and they started there. And now magic, when you're young, is often quite used as a social crutch. So if you're one of the kids at school that well, weren't, like, you weren't very good socially, or you were kind of a nerd, or you kept to yourself, uh, you couldn't make friends, stuff like that, magic was a great way to, you know, you get a deck of cards, you learn a trick and you can go in and suddenly you can impress everybody, even the biggest kids around you. When I was 18, uh, before I was a magician, I used to be a fire performer. I did something called poi, which involves spinning fire. So you get two chains and there's Kevlar balls at the end of the chains. You dip them in paraffin, you light them on fire, and then you spin them in these cool patterns. I'm sure you guys have seen it. So that's what I used to do on Grafton Street. You know, I also did it mostly with friends and just having a laugh doing it. And one night, uh, on a really big night in Dublin where some results are released for that will determine your future when you're 18 called the Leaving Cert I had a freak accident where my vest caught on fire at a party I was doing the trick where you spin a big wheel of fire in front of you and before I know it my vest is gone up in flames uh, completely up in flames while I'm ablaze someone there thinks it's a good idea to throw beer on me to try and help. This is 100% true, I swear to God. Uh, obviously it didn't help, but it just made things worse. Now, obviously I was rushed to the hospital uh, and it turned out that I had second and third degree burns on my skin uh, and really bad burns on my neck and my hands were just fried as well. So if you're squeamish, look away now because I'm gonna put some photos up on screen. While I was in hospital, with my hands bandaged to the nines and my chest not being able to move without pain and all this stuff, a friend of mine comes in, says, I always knew you had a hot body, and made a few jokes about me getting burnt, and he gave me a book about card tricks, completely as a joke, because I wouldn't be able to hold, like, a one card, let alone a deck, or I couldn't even go through the pages of the book till my hands got a bit better. So I was stuck in hospital, and I would try my best to leaf through these pages just out of boredom and I would read about the tricks. Now obviously when I was a kid I loved David Blaine, uh, I really liked watching Keith Barry when I was a kid as well. Um, so to read about these techniques, oh you can make someone choose a card, oh you can, you can make their card be on the top or the bottom. It's kind of cool because it kind of feels like it's illegal, like if you go into a, a casino, I, I don't know, it's kind of a strange thing. So the minute I got home and the bandages on my hands came off, I grabbed the deck uh, and just started performing and practicing and everywhere I went I had a deck of cards and I would ask someone can can I do a trick in you and they'd say who the fuck are you get away from me <laughs> and I'd say, okay sorry so but I really really annoyed as many people as I could trying to show them tricks and then eventually I think I got kind of good and I would get a few free gigs here and there and you know just hone my craft David Blaine has this great phrase you don't get into magic, magic gets into you. Uh, and magic truly got into me. I loved every facet of it, from the history, to the performing, to the rehearsals. The way it made people feel is like being able to give someone a drug that's not bad for you. It's unbelievable, you see people smile, people scream, like they can't get over these things that you're doing. And in your head you're like, well, it is just a trick. The rest is kind of history. I, I could go down different routes here, but I want to keep this short and sweet. So that's really how I got started in magic. If anyone out there is watching this and they have an interest in learning about magic or a sleight of hand or mentalism or anything like that, always feel free to send me a message, like a private message, and just ask for any kind of advice that you need. 
Don't send any dick pics, that's kind of weird. I'm not that kind of dude. <laughs> but any questions related to magic, we're all good. I can't wait to share all the answers with you. So. <laughs> Alright guys, that concludes my second vlog. The next one, I promise, we're going to talk TV and a few ideas about how to get your own TV show. Until then, peace out, motherfucker.